All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is a nine ways to consume Kubernetes and OpenStack in 10 minutes. Uh, actually, we don't have a choice, then uh, we're going to cut short if we don't. <laughs> so uh, let's get uh, straight down to it. A little uh, shameless plug about uh, who we are. We are from CloudOps, Canadian company. Um, since this is recorded, you can just go online and just go all through the bullet points and fancy pictures, so no problem there. A little bit about myself, uh, director of uh, OpenStack solution uh, for CloudOps. Again, literature, uh, feel free. And uh, that's what you look like when you take a picture with the sun in your face. Um, my friend Herat is going to be uh, doing also uh, the, uh, uh, the other part of the segment. Um, OpenStack engineer and uh, case enthusiast and organizer uh, for CloudOps for uh, many meetups, OpenStack Canada and uh, Kubernetes Canada, also in uh, Montreal, Toronto and Ottawa. So I just wanted to start quickly by talking about you know, microservices, because that's, that's the idea behind Kubernetes and using Docker in the back end. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not something that's like Docker that's not new. You know, it's, it's, uh, everything that's old is new again. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just getting traction uh, with, uh, you know, the adoption of open source technologies, uh, the ascension of the pluggable architecture, OpenStack is a great example, um, and the rise of the container ecosystem. Uh, the open source technology adoption, just a quick point, just basically imagine to do what we're trying to do here today if every, everything was a silo that's fully locked in with a vendor license. We go nowhere. Uh, the pluggable architecture is a, uh, is a huge deal and uh, the core of having uh, microservices. Uh, what they prom the, the, the promises of microservices uh, basically is supposed to give us growth, agility, and you know, uh, risk reduction. Uh, the idea behind that is that uh, you know, uh, if you're able to have something that's stable that's going to help your business grow, then you need to have your infrastructure to grow with it. Uh, give you agility, uh, you know, that where you can fix something overnight or doing rolling upgrades or you know, rolling back if there's an issue. Uh, risk reduction, uh, well basically, you know, if you do micro updates and everything, just makes things easier, uh, you know, if, uh, if everything fails at one point. And the idea of microservices, of course, is that if we have a huge application, then it's a nightmare to operate or fix. Uh, it's easier to fix, you know, one line of code because it was an error, an error and do an, a rolling update than anything else. So, now let's get started. So, uh, number nine and number eight in the one slide, and Yes, I know it's not really related to OpenStack itself. Uh, KubeADM and Minikube, uh, which is something you can run on your laptop. So if you want to start somewhere, it's a great point, but you could also use it in an instance running on OpenStack. Uh, so KubeADM coming with a uh, Kubernetes 1.4, uh, which is basically a bootstrap command. Like you send two commands, kind of looks like Docker thing, and then you get a cluster. Um, so that's one way of, of, uh, of doing this. Uh, it gives you everything you need uh, you know, from uh, the latest uh, Kubernetes release. Uh, on the other side is the Minikube. Uh, Minikube is awesome on a laptop to get, to get you going. Uh, it gets you almost everything you need to start using uh, Kubernetes. It's missing a few things like load balancers and uh, you know, persistent volumes, uh, but, and also cloud providers. So that's why like, if you really want to use it on OpenStack, just like, put it on an instance and, and let it go. Of course, you're not consuming it. Uh, eventually, it's going to come there. So the other one's the hardware, which is basically like build your own Death Star. Uh, it's like go and get, get it, build it, and then use it. Uh, it's awesome if you want full control or if you just want to learn how to do it, which is awesome. Uh, so feel free. Uh, so you're in control, but the cons is that you end up with a snowflake. Uh, so we're Canadians, so that's something we're used <laughs> to, but that's not necessarily a good thing in IT. Uh, so we're trying to stay away from that. So that's the, uh, the hard way. The next one is uh, using heat template from uh, the case uh, 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 special interest group. Uh, basically, this is a nice little project. Uh, you, somebody who's using uh, Kubernetes, there's the cube up script. That's, uh, that's basically, that's, that's what it is. Uh, it gives you, uh, you know, it's great with OpenStack resources. You can consume what you got. You got uh, LBAS, V1 or V2. You got Cinder integration that's in there. Uh, of course, you can connect to OpenStack, I said that already, so, but this is really something that you can point to the API and consume it properly. Uh, so it's a heat template, so it's fairly simple. There is some down, well, no downside to it. Uh, you know, it's uh, like, don't use that in production, please, uh, to deploy your environment. It's linked to CentOS 7. 
so it's not uh, so far. Uh, there's no rocket support. So it's really a Docker thing. So uh, yeah, and you know, the real uh, alternative to LBAS uh, is uh, is on the way. But that's again uh, a great solution if you want to consume OpenStack resources. Uh, number five is uh, Cargo by CubeSpray. Uh, this is actually the first one I've used personally, and I, you know, that, that's my thing. I, I just loved it. Uh, so it's really a, uh, an all-in-one deployment. Uh, you'll get all the latest and greatest. So if you're really stuck to, ah, I want 1.3 release, then that's an issue. Uh, so that's, that's a little problem. Uh, so you have, uh, it gives you DNS, it gives you the, uh, the front end, gives you Weave or Flannel <laughs> if you want to change the network. Uh, you can put Calico. There was a Calico session earlier on. Uh, so if you want the layer 3 BGP networking, uh, there's some limitation. Uh, the major one actually, well, you know, there's well limited integration in add-ons, but the, the part that's important is that not intuitive, and then there's the, the big chunk of text, is that if you don't know what you're doing uh, with Cargo and looking at the config, it, it's gonna be like a challenge. But uh, that's basically the only thing. And once you get through it, then it's, it's an awesome tool. And then, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to pass the clicker to Erat, and Thanks. I'll let you go. Yeah, uh, I will continue. I'll just cover two options from the vendors, and then two options from the OpenStack services. So, uh, Juju by Canonical. Uh, it's an uh, application modeling tool from uh, Canonical, as I said, uh, Ubuntu. And uh, you can uh, deploy any application using Juju Charms. Um, so, one of the Juju Charms they have is a Kubernetes cluster, where you can uh, deploy it uh, as a small footprint or as a multi-node deployment type, and you, you can get out of the box dashboard, uh, ingress controller, and DNS. And there is a nice feature you can scale up and scale down your cluster. On the downside is like, it's a very opinionated way of deploying it Kubernetes, so if you're canonical customer, it's probably something you, you should look first. And if you want to get a support, you can get a subscription per node from uh, canonical, and you can try it in the booth downstairs how it works, uh, pretty simple. Um, so the next option is OpenShift uh, by Red Hat. Uh, so you probably heard the uh, platform as a service OpenShift. Uh, recently it moved to Kubernetes as a underlay. Uh, so Red Hat did a lot of contribution in, uh, to the Kubernetes side. So, um, and also they did a very nice integration uh, with an OpenStack. So you can have a small footprint and multi-master. You can have both containerized or binary based uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster on OpenStack, uh, there is integration with the Keystone and LDAP and other services like Cinder Ceph. Uh, there's option to deploy with, with the Flannel or you can have OpenShift SDN as an option. So um, the downside is basically it's, it's something more than just the Kubernetes cluster. You get a full-blown pass. So if you're really look, looking for this, then yes, maybe. But otherwise, um, and also uh, there is no kind of a uh, way of the kind of provisioning OpenStack services. Uh, they, there is a way of finding like a hit template somewhere, but uh, if you want to do scale up, scale down, I think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. The next is Magnum. Probably everybody knows it's one of the OpenStack services, uh, which makes. Uh, and, uh, uh, just sorry, Eric, that's the official logo for the Magnum project now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Magnum makes uh, container orchestration engines like Kubernetes, Swarm, uh, Mesos as a first class citizen. On, um, on OpenStack, uh, so you can, uh, using Magnum, uh, you can deploy Kubernetes cluster via heat templates uh, using standard uh, Magnum OpenStack APIs. And in the, in the latest release, they added uh, functionality to uh, integrate with Ironic, so you can actually deploy Kubernetes cluster via Ironic. So uh, there is a lot of attempts to integrate uh, Magnum Kubernetes cluster with uh, different services in OpenStack like Cinder, Neutron, Career, Barbican. Uh, on the downside is, uh, I think the main challenge is that uh, we have, op in OpenStack we have six months releases and Kubernetes has three months release. So Magnum projects is always behind like two, two releases. So right now they're still using 1.2, while Kubernetes is 1.4. And there's also, they're trying to focus on many different orchestration engines that also slow down their progress. So, uh, but you know, we're trying to work with the community to kind of, uh, you know, close that gap. Uh, maybe we should find different model of working for the Magnum in terms of uh, uh, release cycles. And finally, Murano. Murano, it, as you know, it's an OpenStack application catalog, which allows users or developers who doesn't have an even like idea how Kubernetes works with a simple like few clicks to deploy a Kubernetes cluster. You can get like the latest release of Kubernetes uh, 1.4 right now. 
uh, with the add-ons configuration like dashboard DNS, you can scale up, scale down. The cluster will automatically be deployed, uh, provisioning all VMs. Um, and they have interesting feature uh, like integration with Calico, so you can actually run VMs and the same tenant and uh, you know running in uh, Kubernetes, let's say in the front end, and they can run in the same kind of uh, networking data plane. So. On, on the downside, there, there's still a lot of work to be done, like to add monitoring, uh, some integration with OpenStack. So we just kind of give you like those options. I think you can you know, look for yourself what is the best choice for you based on your use case. Um, one, uh, and I want to say that you know, all of those projects are focusing kind of to deploy your Kubernetes cluster. But I think the biggest challenge we have here is um, we need to kind of work on, on the integration of uh, between OpenStack and Kubernetes in general, so so that you know OpenStack, Kubernetes and OpenStack would be the same way if you you know using Kubernetes on Google Cloud or on Amazon. So to address this challenge, we have a special interest group uh, uh, in Kubernetes community uh, where we you know trying to solve those problems. And right now we're looking for developers who can contribute. Uh, so if you have you know if you're interested, you can talk to me or we have Steve here, so we can you know. We, 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 we will be happy to onboard you on this project. So that's it. Thank right. you. There's anything, question, comment, see us.